folks, welcome back to the Holy Regular ECY Shedcast and a very belated Happy New Year to you. Um, thank you for bearing with me whilst I um, took a break from doing the Shedcast. Much appreciated. I, I really wasn't sure whether I would uh, want to come back, to be honest, to doing it. Um, but this week I seem to have found myself in a good headspace um and actual space on the table and uh, lots to talk about and stuff like that so uh, i thought i'd give it another go so here we are hope you're all okay um you might be able to just hear the pitter patter of tiny paws that's ebony she's at the other side of the kitchen door wondering what i'm doing and why she's not allowed in but i've shut them out in case they bark at anything um, I think she's just wandered off actually. So uh, it's it's a new year, we're still here, which is fantastic. Um, there are, sadly, there are so many businesses dropping at the moment. It's, it's quite scary, um, but it just, you know, it just makes me so grateful that we're still here and we're still going. Um, times are hard, it has to be said. But um, I'm clinging on, <laughs> and I th I think we you know we can we can get through it, hopefully touch wood, and um, sort of just keep doing what we love to do. So yeah, it's a funny old time. Hopefully this year might be better than last year. Last year was pretty bad, so uh, I'm not going to say it can't get any worse because it it could, but. Let's let's say it kind of can't, and that this year will be a really good one. It already feels a bit more positive and hopeful and cheerful, although that could just be the sunshine, who knows. Um, but yeah, so we're still here, and um, we've had a funny month because it's January, um, there's loads of bills to pay, and of course it's quiet. I mean, online sales, as well as I know retail as well, um, are really low at the moment. Um, so we've got a January sale on. Um, we've we well had lots of stock, which um, I, it's just so good to have a really good clear out every now and then. Um, so I was really keen to have like a proper clear out. Um, hopefully, make a bit of money to get some of these bills paid off, and it means that for people you know who wanted to get projects ready to set off the, with the new year. Um, it's a good opportunity. It's a good opportunity to ha like try bases that you've maybe not tried before, colours that you've not tried before, um, and things like that. So the January sale is twenty percent off at the moment, um, roughly till the end of the month. Although I've said let's do it until February, probably the fifth, so that if if people are waiting for payday, and I know I am <laughs> for certain things. Um, it means that you've still got a chance to get in there and take advantage of the sale. So it's 20% off hand-dyed yarn. There's no code needed. It'll automatically calculate it at checkout. So once you put your items in your shopping cart, um, then the discount should kick in. There are a few exclusions, and it's only because they were the most recent uh, update. So there's the Keswick, Aaron and Double Knit, and... Uh, Coniston fingering. Uh, we've just excluded those because it was just like, you know, these are brand new on the website and it's a bit galling if I immediately put them on sale. Um, so, but we'll see how they go, they're going because to be honest, the Keswick double knit, it's basically not selling. Um, the Aaron sells well and the fingering weight when we do it sells well, but the double knit just really doesn't. Um, so we'll see how the double knit goes. Hand dyed double knit is a funny one. It's it's very hit and miss. We sell loads of Milburn double knit, but not so much the hand dyed. Um, and they're gorgeous yarns. So anyway, see how the Keswick double knit goes. Um, but if you fancy trying it, there's loads in stock. Um, so yeah. That's where we're up to. So I've been trying to hold off um, planning an update for January, really, whilst the sale's running, um, just to give us a chance to sort of try and make some money, pay some bills without 
just immediately buying new stuff again, which I'm desperate to, but it, it, we need to be sensible. So um, saying that, I have one update to tell you about, but this has been in progress since early December. It's just taken quite a while to get it all sorted. Um, and then hopefully once we get to February, we'll be in a really good position or at least a better position to um, start looking ahead at doing some lovely big updates. Um, th there are so many yarns that we've we've got almost no stock of it. So it's funny because we've got a lot of stock of some things and none of other things. Um, like Carlisle, even Pendle Foreplay actually, I noticed the other day is really low on stock now. Um, and all sorts of other things, which I'm desperate to have a really good restock. Um, but to justify that, I do need to clear some space. So it, it should all fall in uh, nicely, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's where all that lots up to. Um, the other in, sort of influencing factor over all of this is the fact that a lot of the yarns have not been available to us uh, for months. Um, so we've just been waiting and waiting for those. Um, but things are things are arriving. It's just uh, it's all it's all quite chaotic. It's difficult to plan. Um, and it means that certain things will just be unavailable for absolutely ages. So, yeah, that's an absolute pain. <laughs> but what can you do? Um, so, let's give you a look at um, this update. So, Titus Double Knit, and there is a, a specific reason that we're updating this because, oh, excuse me, I'll just have a lunch. Um, uh, Jennifer Shields Tolan, I'm not, not sure if you'll have heard of her, or you, well, you probably know, you probably have, but you might have heard of her as JST Knitwear Design. Um, she is releasing a jumper pattern in Titus Double Knit, and she's actually designed a hat to go with it as well. I hope I'm allowed to say this um, in public. I think I am. I hope I'm not spoiling anything there. Um, so she is, has done a gorgeous jumper. It's two colours. Um, there's a main colour and then there's some contrast, well, it's not a high contrast, but it could be, uh, colouring in the yoke. Um, there's a, a bit of texture. I think there's a bit of just brioche around the yoke. It looks like that from what I've seen anyway. Um, it's very cool and it means you get two colours to play with and then the hat which matches again it's two colours so um, we wanted to make sure that we had sweater quantities available for people and I wanted to make sure that we had some colour combinations available too that's the best bit isn't it um, and Titus Double Knit as you hopefully already know this is our extra fine merino and silk so it's 75 percent merino 25 percent silk and that's the same blend as the titus four ply the titus lace uh titus fingering as well now they're all the same blend but different thicknesses or spun differently and this is the double knit again we've we didn't have this in stock for absolutely ages um not deliberately it just kind of gradually sold out and i wasn't really restocking it or in a hurry to restock it because it hadn't sold very well um but we did it we gave it sort of a a comeback update to see how it went and it went well um that that was the last one of it so when jen said about about using it for this jumper we thought it it made a lot of sense to go for another bigger update, make sure we've got some extra quantities, it's got the pattern support, um, and see how it goes. It's such a gorgeous yarn. If you've had Titus four ply or Titus fingering or Titus lace, you will know how gorgeous this yarn is. It's so soft and silky. And of course the double knit, you really feel the softness, um, maybe not more than the four ply, but 
I don't know, you, you feel it in a different way because it's just thicker, so there's more of it in in a way. It's just kind of more squishy. Um, so I'm probably explaining that really badly. But it's, yeah, it's more squishy, the double knit. Um, so let me pick out a colour where you can hopefully see the texture well. Let's try that one. How's that? So it's lovely and shiny, good stitch definition. Nice and strong because of the silk content. Takes the colours really well as well. As you can see, but with this merino, it's super soft. So um, obviously, um, we don't know what Jen's jumper looks like in terms of, I can't show it on screen right now, but like I say, it's what like one main colour and then a bit of contrast. So I've been photographing uh, colour combinations in pairs to hopefully help with the colour choice um, in that way. But I've done colour combinations with more than two colours in as well, um, in case you've got other projects in mind. So I'll just take you through. There, were, there are a few colours still in stock um, from the previous update. There was Misty Woods still in stock, um, Antique Rose, um, Thunder, Else was there one more? No, that's it. There's a couple of skeins of like steel, and I think there's one of charcoal still in as well. And um, but it's mainly these three, so I've brought them out because there's enough still in stock to be worth including in the colour combinations. Um, and then for this update, it's it's probably fairly autumnal, um, just because that's what I felt like really. Um, and I think, to, to be honest, I know it's January, but I'm kind of still on autumnal colours in my head. Um, so let's take a look. So this is compost, which is this lovely dark brown. Um, we have bark, which is this sort of mousy brown, greyish brown. Um, stone chat, which is, Someone was asking me to describe it last week and it was like, well, it's kind of pink, but it's got a bit of an orangey um, hit tint to it as well. And it's, um, you know, if you catch it in like in the right light, it can look quite orangey. Um, so that's quite a difficult one to describe, to be honest. A lot of them are. Uh, Rambling Rose. Another pink. Heliotrope. It's a good mid-tone. Um, Black Magic Rose. Always a favourite. Falling Leaves, which is this lovely gold. Steel, because it's always helpful to have a proper neutral, I find. Um, Driftwood. Again, still a neutral, but with a bit more warmth to it which can be really helpful. Rust. And Red Kite. So um, there's plenty to go out with colour combinations here. Um, where to start? Let me, I'll tell you what, I'll start with one of my favourites. So let's start with Black Magic Rose. Right, so imagine this is your main colour. Whether it's the hat or the or the jumper or whatever, um, if that's like the main colour. So I think, well, to be honest, this colour goes with basically everything. But um, something that catches my eye would be falling leaves. Um, or you could go for rust. Oh, just the pop of contrast on that. Just love it. Um, you could go a bit lighter and go for driftwood or a bit different again and go for red kite. Um, I also love black magic rose with steel. That would really stand out. Uh, again, 
bark for that slightly softer um, pop. Stone chart. Uh, Rambling Rose. So Rambling Rose is a slightly cooler pink compared to Stone Chart. There you go, you can see them next to each other. So that's the Stone Chart and that's the Rambling Rose. Um, what else have we got? Heliotrope, which is a direct relation of Black Magic Rose, but lighter, obviously. Excuse me. Um, that's Heliotrope. Fluffing my nose. Um, Antique Rose. Again, a nice, cool, lilac-y pink. And then if I just show you, you can compare that to Rambling Rose. You can see the difference there. And um, what else have we got? We've got Compost. See, I even, I just love those together. I know it's not high contrast, but I think it would still be enough. Um, for, especially for something like if it's brioche or like um, a colour work rib, sort of similar effect. Um, and then Misty Woods. And finally, Thunder. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure about those two when I picked it up, but yes, that's nice. Um, so that's Black, Black Magic Rose. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, it's so itchy. Um, what else have we got? So, mm, 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 mm. let's have a look at Rust as the main colour. Now, Rust, again, it goes with all sorts. And again, Falling Leaves. Oh, is that not just lush? So falling leaves and then something a bit lighter, driftwood. A uh, bit different, red kite um, or steel for a real pop. Um, I might want to do that one because that will look hideous. Bark, yes. Oh. Um, no. Don't want that. Uh, stone chart. Yeah, I think that looks that looks really cool. It's kind of a bit vintagey. I like that. Um, compost. Because remember, it doesn't need to be super high contrast. Uh, or thunder. What about that? What do you think of that? Yay or nay? I'm not sure about that. Um, so, oh, this is another one that I really like. Compost and Stone Chat. Oh, what about Stone Chat and Falling Leaves? Again, for a real vintage vibe there. Um, oh, there's so many, so many Falling Leaves and Steel. Um, you could go for like really nice soft neutrals and go for bark and driftwood. Um, or even driftwood and steel. And then we've got more oh, sort of the pinks, haven't we? Heliotrope. So you could do like heliotrope with uh, antique rose or heliotrope with rambling rose. about this heliotrope with misty woods pink and green is a classic combo um what else do we have oh heliotrope with driftwood yes um yeah there's just tons to go out here um i'll tell you what there's quite a few nice fades that you could do as well so um we've got black magic rose heliotrope Rambling Rose and Antique Rose. It's not ugh, it's not deliberate that they're together in one update, but I mean, come on. Comfort Fade Cardi, anyone? Yeah. Or you could go for the more autumn version of something like that. Because we've got Red Kite Stone Chat, which um, 
go so well together. And then, oh, I can't decide. Um, maybe put rust there. Um, or no, how about driftwood there? And then maybe, do you want compost on the end? Yeah. Or, or you could go for the driftwood into bark. If I can hold those up. Like that. Or would you have them that way around maybe? Yeah, that works. Um, I don't know why I'm picking out combinations of four. I think it's because I've got um, the Comfort Fade Cardi on my mind at the moment. So, <laughs> I'm in like four colour mode. There's these three together. Rust, compost, falling leaves. Uh, just all the autumn colours. I love them. Um, bark into that mix. Oh, um, do you want stone chat in there as well? And then what if you add red kite? For a bit of a pop. Um, or black magic rose bit of contrast. Whew. Um, I've also got sort of the neutrals together, if I just put those together. Because, um, oh yeah, we've got compost, bark and driftwood, which are gorgeous together. And then of course we've got steel. Where would you put steel? Well, you could put it next to the compost for contrast or pop it on the end there. Um, so yeah, there's loads to go out. Not, I've not gone for many greens in this update. Um, and I, I say this a lot about a lot of the colours, I know that, but greens are really hit and miss. Um, and I really, I kind of just had this whole autumn browns, rusts, that kind of thing in my head. Um, so I've, I've left out the greens for now. Well, we've got misty woods, but apart from that, uh, falling leaves and compost. That's lovely. No, what am I talking about? That's thunder. Ugh, obviously it's thunder. Falling leaves and thunder. Um, so yeah, that's the yarn. Um, I had to dig about in the sample cupboard as well, just to see if we, well, see what I had that I could show you um, with it knitted up. Which is something that I always like to do, you know, we have all these samples and it's like, what's the point in having them if I'm not going to use them? Excuse me. So, it's really nice to go through the sample cupboard as well and um, reacquaint myself with some of the stuff that I don't wear as often. Um, so, there's a few things here that I've brought down. Um, these are Acorn Fingerless Mittens. This is a pattern by Anna Elliott, and it's one of the patterns that we sell. It's actually uh, fingerless mittens and, and a hat, but um, I think the hat must have got to the... It's either at the back of the cupboard or it's in one of my regular rotation boxes. Um, so yeah, so they're Titus double knit as well. Um, I can show you those on. There you go. Really nice, simple textured pattern. So there, tight just double knit. What else did I get? Right, this, this is ancient history now. This is a shawl. Which way around is it? That way. Is it that way? Yeah. Um, this is a shawl from Louise Zass Bangham's book which oh, I don't even remember what, well it was out we were still in Eden when it came out because we went and photographed the samples down at Kirkstall Abbey um and yeah there were there were loads that, and using all different yarns um the book's called is it knit play colour um We'll pop all, all the notes and links and everything um, in the show notes below and in the show notes on the blog. So um, if I'm getting this wrong, don't worry, because we'll write it all up as well correctly. Um, but yeah, so this the shawl was in Titus Double Knit. This is Briar Rose, the colourway. 
and this uses three skeins so i'm not sure if you can even still buy the book to be honest you might be able to but i'm not sure because she's i mean she's changed careers and done all sorts since then um so she doesn't do the knitwear design anymore but i brought it i thought it was worth bringing down and showing you a because it's just really nice and b because this shows you what three skeins can make so this is three skeins of double knit and that is a really good size shawl. Um, as you know, I, I always wear them as scarves. So to me, that's a really good size for a scarf. Um, and actually, I'm going to keep that out because I want to wear that. <laughs> the thing is, I don't go anywhere anymore. You know, like I, I used to just throw a shawl on every time I went out. But the only places that I go now are dog walking, running hiking more dog walking that's it I just like everything that i do it's like outdoor pursuits it's not like going out for dinner or anything like that and i mean we don't particularly miss it but it does mean that i'm i'm not wearing my shawls as much as i used to um because for work to be honest it's more practical to be wearing a cowl because excuse me again it's not sort of like get it, getting in the way of, you know, I mean, I wear an apron to dye in, but it means having this sort of underneath my apron um, and trying to keep it all out of the way, you know, whereas when it's a cowl, it's just sat there um, and it's, it's not really getting in the way. And, and I really love my shawls and I have a huge collection of them. But like I say, at the moment, I don't get a lot of chances to wear them but mind you that doesn't stop me still knitting them and enjoying them um so yeah anyway where was i um so that was that one and then the other one that i found is this which is called corf castle that's corf as in c-o-r-f-e castle this is a pattern by claire divine again from quite a while ago and she's sort of had a change of career since then as well and um i think she still does the knitwear design um but she like she moved to australia and stuff so you know um this isn't quite as ancient history as that one but it's kind of history but um i believe that this pattern is still for sale it might only be on ravelry at this point i'm not sure um anyway we'll check and pop it in the notes like i said but the reason that this is handy is because i made this to test how titus double knit would play with melbourne double knit you know if they would interact nicely um i'll take it off and then you can see it properly um and they do they do they're lovely together so again that's another option um, you could get a nice precious skein of Titus double knit and then combine it with um, a, a ball or two of Milburn double knit. Um, so I'm not sure on the quantity on this. It might have been, might have been 100 grams of each colour because it's quite a loose gauge. Um, but yeah, we can check. Um, but yeah, you can see the, the Titus, which is the thunder, um, goes really well with the Milburn double knit, which is rain. Um, and it's got this lovely pico bind off. I love a pico edging. I love either a pico edging or an eye cord edging. And I know that they're completely different. But I just like the way they, they kind of finish the edge of the fabric. Like, yeah. So yeah, that's a good one. It's a really nice shawl. Um, but I don't, other than that, I don't have very much in um, a Titus double knit. So I need to rectify that. I really ought to make a jumper in it because it's so nice to work with. Oh, I'll tell you what else I have got, which I've not got on me. Um, and that is definitely in the regular rotation box. Is a hat and it's called Jewel Hat by Hannah. And I can't remember her second name. Apologies if she catches wind of that. Um... It, she's Jamanda Cro Cottage Crafts, um, you might have heard of her, and 
it's it's a hat where it's got a knitted brim and then crocheted um body so it's very cool um it slouches really nicely um and i think i used oh i used one color and then i did one row of the crochet bit in a different color um so i used pen i missed and something else that i've forgotten um but yeah that was in titus uh, double knit and that was to test up sort of how it crochets as well um and i liked the fact that the pattern combined knitting and crochet i thought that was very cool um i really enjoyed making it and wish that i'd remember to bring it through but never mind um we could pop a picture of it up in the show notes on the blog that would help so yeah that's uh samples in titus double knit I, I, do you know what? I don't have a huge amount of samples in any of the hand-dyed double knits. Um, there's a recurring theme here, isn't there? Um, I think because I had hand-dyed double knits and then we got the Milburn double knit. And once we got Milburn double knit, and I actually had Whitfell as well, didn't I? And when I got those, it was just like, you know, all guns blazing, making um samples in those yarns um and i think i felt that because they were mill dyed they needed more samples to help sell them i have no idea whether that that was really true or not but that's what happened and it happened with the millburn four ply as well to be honest um and i think it just means that i kind of got so distracted by the millburn that i don't necessarily have a lot of samples in the hand dyed um, and I definitely don't in Titus double knit. I was thinking, actually, I don't in Pendle double knit either. So, um, and they're so gorgeous. What I really want to do is make garments in them because I do wear my hand knit garments every day. Um, so, yeah, but it's all just time, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, not getting distracted by other things, which is something that I'm going to come back to. Excuse me, just have a quick drink. Right, so that's Titus Double Knit. That's the yarn and the samples. Okay, now that I've done the photos, it means that we can um, schedule when this update will go live. Uh, I'm not sure when that'll be, but keep your eye on our social media and the newsletter because we will let you know, obviously. Um, what day is it? Is it Wednesday? Yeah. Um, so it's Wednesday. So this, sh I mean, it should be done and ready and live by the end of the week. Um, and we obviously we just need to collaborate with Jen to make sure that she's ready for her pattern release at the same time. And then it's sort of a, a group effort as well. Um, but that's was very exciting. Um, so yeah, Titus double it. And I hope it sells well because I'd love to do more of these, especially these rich colours. Um, you know, I just want to do more and more and more. Uh, so that's updates. We do actually have big news. <laughs> well, it's big for us because we've been waiting for it for so long. Is that Titus 4ply will be returning soon as well. Um, we've had so many requests for it. And it's been so frustrating to have to say, we know it's out of stock. And unfortunately, we can't do anything about it because we can't get hold of it. So um, that is finally on its way. We're just planning how much to do. I really want to do like, I don't know, like 30 odd colorways. I'd love to do just tons of it. Um, and I think we will do a lot. But it's just a bit risky because if I, I mean, if I get it, I've got to pay for it. Um, and if times are hard and I feel like times are hard um, and it seems like they're hard for everybody, that means I could potentially be sat on a lot of stock for quite a long time and I've got to pay for it either way. So I'm just trying to weigh up. Do, do I just go for it? Usually and historically, I would just go for it and um, 
you know, you just kind of trust your instinct. But um, I think the past year is just making me really second guess absolutely everything. To be honest, it's Titus Four Ply. It, it's literally our best selling yarn. So I'm probably just going to throw caution to the wind and completely go for it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Watch this space. I, I have to, don't I? It's Titus Four Ply. Um, so that's what's coming up. There's all sorts of other stuff that I'm, I'm dying to update as well, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Um, so following on from that, I thought I'd just give you a whip update. Um, this sounds weird, but one of my goals this year is to knit and crochet less, not in, not in time, but, well, maybe a bit in time, but just to put less pressure on myself to be productive with it. Because it's my job, um, I'm kind of like, every spare moment I have should, should be spent making samples. And yeah, I've been doing that for the past 10 years or so. And that's fine. But it means that I really struggle to make time for myself to actually like read a book or have a bath, you know? And so my goal this year is to just try and chill out a bit and actually spend some of my crafting time reading, having a bath and a bit of gardening when it's a bit, well, a bit warmer. Um, and actually allow myself to spend some of my spare time doing other things when I'm at home. Um, so over Christmas, over the Christmas holidays, um, I had this project on the go, but I was determined that I was not going to feel like I had to be working on it every spare moment or every time I sat down. Um, so I'm just trying to like allow myself to take the time over things and enjoy them, but accept that it means that I'll get less done, which is what I mean when I say that my goal is to do less knitting and crochet. Um, it's to allow myself to do less, maybe. Might be a more accurate way to say that. Anyway, this is what I was making in December and over the holidays. It is, there's quite a lot of knitting in it, to be honest. Um, this uh, is called All the Love by Hohi Locatelli um, of boxy fame. So as you can see, it's also a big boxy sweater, like full on big boxy thing. It's got these lace panels down the front. Um, it's got this lovely neckline, which I might end up having to tighten up, we'll see. I usually do. It's got a bit of short row shaping on the back. Oh, sorry, I've got fluffy in my nose again. Bit of short row shaping on the back, which is really good for me. Um, it's made in, well, either double knit or I'm using Rosedale four ply held double because I basically just had a real hankering for a sparkly black jumper and I wanted it to be big and boxy without making another boxy. So when I saw that this was done to a double knit gauge, I was like, ah, that's that's exactly what I need. Obviously, it is meant to have sleeves and it will one day acquire a pair of sleeves. But today is not that day. Um, much as I'm looking forward to wearing it, uh, yeah, the sleeves will happen at some point. So. That's what I'm working on. The thing is I got waylaid, otherwise it would have been long since finished. And I got waylaid by this idea that suddenly sprung into my head and it just had to be done. You know, some, sometimes these things can't wait, they just have to happen. So I did loads of swatching using three uh, strands of four ply held together. Apologies if you can hear the dogs. They're probably barking at another dog walking past. That's the usual thing. Um, they're more bothered about that than cats. It's like, it's other dogs. You like other dogs. 
not when they walk past our house they don't um anyway where was i so i did lots of swatching um because i want really wanted to make this so this is going to be a cowl it's in something similar to a fisherman's rib but not quite a fisherman's rib because i didn't want to do fisherman's rib because i love it but like there's loads of things in Fisherman's Rib already. Um, so I wanted to do something a bit different. So it is a bit different, but it's that sort of style. Um, I mean, unblocked, it just looks pretty standard, doesn't it? But once it's blocked, um, it looks quite different. And it's got a good drape to it once it's blocked as well. And the idea with this was that I just wanted to, I just had a hankering to make something using coniston fingering held tripled. Um, because by tripling it, you really get that mild effect and there's a lot of scope to play with colour there. And then I wanted the pattern to be something that would work well with potentially quite a lot of marling. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. There's still a fair bit of yarn left to go so i think this is going to work out i should measure my swatches really shouldn't i but i'm gonna i'm gonna use all of the yarn because i don't really want there to be a load of leftovers so i'm just going to keep going so i think that this is going to be i mean to be honest by the time you do that with it that's that's only two loops around the neck so i think this is going to be a three loop cowl potentially or two loose loops um so i've got really waylaid knitting that which is why i haven't finished my sparkly black jumper however <laughs> um last weekend something else then popped into my head because i'm doing a lot of hiking at the moment and i'm going to be doing for a while and i'll tell you why in a minute um it's so so handy having a four ply hat in my pocket um, but the four ply hat that I've been taking with me is all over lace. It's my willow hat and it's lovely. But it, if you're on the top of a, a of a hill and the mist's rolling in, it's quite fine. I, need something, I needed something a bit more dense, but would still squish up into my pocket really easily. Um, and it was basically, I was like mulling over what would be the most efficient way for it to be small but as warm as possible you know you know how you just like end up overthinking these things anyway point being this this sprung into my head and it was like okay forget everything else i need to do this one now so um i'm now knitting this and which is all very well but it's one by one rib and it is taking ages I'm a fast knitter and it's still taking ages. I just want to finish it and get it on my head and get it, you know, I want it in my pocket next weekend when I'm out. <laughs> I doubt that it will be because it is taking ages. Um, so I'm using Carlisle fingering, which I think might be completely out of stock right now. Um, or there might be a, a tiny amount in. It's one of the things that I really want to do as soon as I can. Um, so yeah, it's just a basic one by one rib hat. Um, the pattern I'm using is called the Boyfriend Hat by Pearl Soho and it's free, it's on their blog. Um, I think they have it with a folded brim, but I'm not gonna do that. I literally just want kind of like a skull cap type thing. Um, and it is, it is just for stuffing in my pocket whilst we're going up the hill and I'm sweating and then we get to the top of the hill and as soon as we stop, I'm absolutely freezing and the first thing I need to do is put a hat on. Um, so that has waylaid me from knitting that, which has waylaid me from knitting that. And this is what I do, you see. I, like, I'll start some, I, I kind of ended up starting a few things and I, and I usually get about 75% through and then I get bored and I'm just kind of like, oh, I want to wear this now. Um, 
or my mind starts wandering and I start thinking of other things, which is very dangerous. And then I get really impatient and I have to do the next thing because I'll forget it if I don't. Um, or I'll write it down, but then I have so many things written down that they never get done anyway. Um, have that as well. And then, so I ended up with quite a few things on the needles or the hook. I've got things on the hooks as well. Um, but then I get overloaded by it all. And then I have to go through them one by one and finish the whole lot and go back to zero. So um, I kind of tend to go from no projects to quite a lot of projects to then all the way back to none. Weird. Um, but it's just the way my brain works. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of roll with it. So that's what's on my needles at the moment. Um, I haven't brought my crochet through because one of the items is a scrap blanket and I actually, actually should have brought that through, but it's been hanging around for so long that I'd forgotten that I was doing it. But every now and then I just pick it up and add another few rows to it and it's just really nice and soothing. Um, it's a four ply scrap blanket. And then the other thing I've started, but this it's, it wasn't really worth bringing through to show you because I haven't done very much. Um, I'm knit, uh, crocheting a new Colin Trave blanket, but this time without the fluff. Um, so, in fact, maybe this is a good incentive to add a, add a bit more to that and then I can show you next time. Because um, the I think the colour's going to look really cool. Um, so yeah, that's all my stuff. That's all the yarn news, um, project news. The only other thing that um, I was going to say is I do also have this on the go. Um, I don't know whether other, I mentioned it, but I read Pillars of the Earth. Must have been last year, I think. Um, oh, it smells so good. Oh, honestly, that smell. Does anyone else do this as soon as you pick up a book? Mm, the smell. Um, please tell me that somebody else does that and it's not just me. Um, so, yes, I've read Pillar Pillars of the Earth and I absolutely loved it. Um, and so this is the prequel to it. Um, so I am, I'm a couple hundred pages in. It's quite hefty. It's about 900 pages. Um, but because, as I mentioned earlier, I am determined to allow myself time to read this year i'm actually spending time reading it and i'm really enjoying it and it's so nice to get stuck into a good book i have a huge stash of unread books because i love buying books like for me buying books is a separate hobby to reading the same as yarn you know buying yarn that that's not the same hobby as using it it's a different thing it's like you're collecting a thing, actually using it is a whole different ball game. And it's the same with books. So I have a big stash of unread books. And I just love this thing of like, when, when, I've, when I've finished a book and, and it's like, what shall I read next? You know, and you've just got this, this stash of potential. Same as with yarn again, you know, when, if, if you, if you ever do get to the point where you have no project and you're like, what shall I make next? And you go and look at your stash and it's just this, it's just sh like shelves or whatever, boxes, whatever you've got of potential. And it's just, it's exciting. And it's just like, that's a really fun part of the project or whatever it is, is, is actually choosing and, and having the pleasure of being able to browse and take your time over it and decide what you're going to make or read next um oh it's just lovely love it so um anyway that's what's on my reading list this week and probably for quite a lot more weeks to follow um right i think that's all no it's not on my news it's not on my news not on my news ah i was going to tell you about the hiking so Right, don't laugh, okay, but um, last year I did something a bit silly 
um i think it was yeah it was it was like a month before my surgery um i signed up to an ultra marathon yeah um the furthest i've ever run is a half marathon a couple of times and that was really hard so obviously i have now signed up for an ultra marathon it's 33 miles it's 7,000 feet of climbing, well, up, not literally climbing. Um, and there's 12 and a half hours to complete it. So technically you could walk the entire thing as long as you maintain an average of, I think it's three or three and a half miles an hour, which is fine apart from when you're going uphill. Um, but, so, I, <laughs> I wasn't going to tell anyone when I first signed up because I, th in all honesty, I thought everyone would laugh at me and I wouldn't blame them. But I was so excited that first of all, I told my running buddies, there's a group of four of us that sort of run together and have a little chat group on the go. And they were like, okay, that's completely nuts, but really awesome. Uh, and I didn't expect that response, but I was so excited that I just had to tell somebody. And it turned out that one of them <laughs> was up for joining me in doing it. So I have a training partner now as well. So the two of us are gonna do this ultra marathon and the other two are supporting us. And um, they're sort of joining us on our shorter and more gentle training runs. Um, we've got ourselves an airbnb house for when the race is on so that we can all go up together and be together and our other halves can go as well and hopefully the doggies can go because mel's got a dog as well um we often dog walk together and um i think one of the co we've ended up telling our running club and stuff and i think one of the coaches might might come with us and support us as well it's just turned into this whole big thing um, and the support has been just incredible already. It's in July, so we've got six months, um, which is really good because I'm still recovering from my surgery. <laughs> um, but this is a really long winded way of explaining why my spare time now outside of work is incredibly limited because we have a lot of training to do and it and well the reason it appealed to me rather than a marathon is that marathon training it kind of sounds tedious like i really really admire people that do it because it's just a hell of a lot of running and i adore running it's just my favorite thing ever but i think if i knew i had a training plan that was saying you must run this number of miles this week and you must do this that week that would put that's enough structure to actually put me off whereas for a, a mountain ultra um because it, it's it's in the lake district so it's over mountains the training yes you, we really do need to do a lot and we need to get strong but it's so much more relaxed it's like basically spend as much time as you can hiking um, and it's more, it feels more, um, varied. So we're trying to do lots of hiking so that we can practice making sure we get the uphills nice and we'll be walking them. We'll be walking the uphills. Um, but we want to make sure that we're walking with purpose and intent. So we're practicing lots of, of uphill. Um, I'm keen to practice a lot of downhill because I'm scared of downhill and if possible we'd like to be running the downhills um, and that frightens me so we're practicing lots of that downhill as well but um, it, it, it's nice because it's basically like we can be quite flexible on the with what we do each weekend you know so it might be like a long run on Saturday and then of course dog walking with our families and then a hike on Sunday and again maybe dog walking or we might dog walk together. With ultra marathon training it's more a case of time on your feet regardless of what you're doing 
Um, whereas with your marathon training, it's like you, 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 I think there's more expectation that you'll run the whole thing, um, which just feels like too much pressure to me. Whereas with ultra marathon training, you are expected to walk um, some amount of it, even if it's just all the uphills. So, yeah, um, this is this is basically my life for the next six months. It's work and it's ultra training, um, but I love it. I wanted to do it because I really wanted to do the training because it's basically an excuse to do loads of hiking, be outdoors as much as possible, um, do our cross country races, get muddy, go on big dog walks, take take picnic. There's a lot of food involved. Take picnics with us, and it's just brilliant. So, um, I really yeah, I really fancied the ultra training because I thought I'd really enjoy the training as well as the event. Whereas I think for a marathon, I actually don't know how much I would enjoy the training, and if it that actually feels like a bigger commitment, even though it's probably not maybe i don't know uh so yeah there is there is a reasoning behind all this um it's quite scary it's it's, it's it it's a big challenge um you know I, i'm sure that you're aware that i've got back injury which i have to manage basically permanently um although it responds incredibly well to running um as soon as i stop running it that's when it seizes up so um the running and hiking seems to strengthen it greatly so that's good but nonetheless you know your brain is just going how am, how am i gonna do that how am i gonna be on my feet like running and hiking all day um, and we've got to carry packs because we've got mandatory kit to take with us plus water and stuff um, so it is scary, but I actually, this is going to sound weird. I really wanted to sign up for something that I didn't know if I could do. Um, for me, there's a lot of fun in challenging myself and then putting the work in, um, and not knowing if it was actually doable. And I know how weird that sounds, um, but I'm very, very motivated by it because I don't know if I can do it, but I really, really want to. Uh, I can't really explain any further than that. that that's it. Um, so, yeah, it, it, if I think about the thing as a whole, it's just like quite overwhelming, but we're already doing really well um and we've got six months to go so if we take it a chunk at a time um i think we'll be fine <laughs> we shall see and i will try not to talk about it too much because i know that that's not really what we're here for um but it it's a big part of my life and um just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit and uh <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see I'll, I'll i'll let you know how things are going and uh yeah what what yeah we'll give it our best shot at the end of the day our our main thing is that we will we will do our best but we will really enjoy the process as well as the end result and uh I think there's a lesson in that for for knitting and crochet as well really certainly for me there is because i tend to really focus on the end result and i'd like to enjoy the process a bit more so on that delightful note uh i shall leave it there because we're very nearly at an hour and i need to tidy all this lot away and go and rinse some yarn in the dye shed so I shall see you when I see you. I'm not going to make any promises about how often I'll do these, but just, you know, when the whim takes me. If I can do it weekly, I'll do it weekly, but if not, then so be it. And thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye!